Thank you. Three o'clock. Three zero zero. Get the Mohawk. Get the Mohawk slick back for the day. It's day two. I got a lot of work to do today. It was real cute to catch what I caught yesterday, but it's almost, you're not zeroed, but you got to do it all again. It doesn't matter unless you do. You got to put something in the bag today. Now, I already know going into the day is going to be not the same. It's going to, there's going to be some issues that I'm going to have to deal with. Number one, I got a lot of boats around me. Number two, fishing is always harder on day two. So I'm just got to figure all of that out. But the thing I think we do have working for us, if you look up in the sky, there's, there's not a cloud in the sky. The winds died down a little bit. So we should have more fish moving towards us. And uh, I, I don't think, uh, even though it can be worse, there's gonna be a lot of opportunity for it to be really good today. You heard? Oh, baby! Huh? Did you see that? Got him stuck, baby! Oh! Yes! Can you see all of him though, bro? That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's still that spinning reel. It's doing a little, what I call power finesse. 15 pound braid, 17 pound four carbon hook to it. So he can put a little extra heat on these fish. It looks like this fish is putting a little extra heat on him because he's been hooked <laughs> yeah. up with it for a while here. I'm, I don't know if we got a Tyrannosaurus Rex or what's going on. Just start this today, not today. Those power poles oh, are not god. down very far. Oh god. Oh my god. Oh god. That's the way to start the day. Mm -hmm. Pass a mundo. Boom! How you wanna start the morning, baby? First bite. One for the studio, one for the show. One for the show. <gasps> JT, there's the Miss Nate Pounder from oh yesterday. I think so. Bro. They didn't even let me get warmed up this morning. Golly, my breath still stink. I ain't even brushed my teeth hardly. <laughs> y'all gotta let me get broke in first. Dang, y'all could have gave me like a pound and a half or let me get my hook set lined up, you know? Y'all coming out with eight pounders first cast? Let's go. What I like about that bass, very respectful. He went ahead and just swam out in the middle. None of that bull crap yesterday that I had. <sighs> I tried to throw out there in the next cast and I throw it out there in the middle. <laughs> throw it in the middle of my reed patch. Oh, man. You don't have to give me a minute. I, I know you want me to talk after I catch the fish. I, I just, I, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Pierce I was a not ready clips. for that. Yes, he is. Dude, I never got to see the fish, right? <clears throat> never get to see the fish. I'm fishing, fishing, fishing. I, I'm holding him, holding him. I was like, I, you know, they can fight, they can get sideways, and you think it's a big one and it's like a two pounder. <sighs> two pounder, my butt. 
I was a freaking hoss. Melon head. Double, double Big Mac. Extra cheese. God dang it. Whew. I make the hair stand up on your toes. My God. No batting practice for Belant this morning, Marty. That was a 95 mile an hour fastball on the opening pitch. And yeah, he the, hits it out of the park. He hit a bomb straight away center, and they're still looking up at it. <laughs> and, and go back to the cumulative weight. Yesterday he started, he had basically 24 pounds. Let's go ahead and add a flat eight to that. Now he's at 32. He's made a check, and he's only a bite or two away from hitting the championship round. So, JT, we talk Look about so many Look guys show. in Look such show. small areas do something that nobody else is doing. Mm -hmm. What exactly has he got going on here? Why is it working so well? And why has it been so effective, as, as Marty said? Not quite the same size as his last one. No, they can't all be. Yes, they can. <laughs> he wanted a warm up fish. There it is. He caught the warm up fish second. Don't put him in that side. He'll get eaten. I got two fish. I'll put him in there with that one. I might only have one fish. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you'd still have the same no, no, weight. Gotta be smart, I said. I got two fish and I want to keep it that way. On the bright side, if he ate him, and then I caught a couple more, I'd have like a pound more. I should, I gotta think about this. Oh man, I got a freaking good start today. To start the, uh, start the day off with, I think I had a 7-Eleven yesterday and missed the big bass by an ounce. I think I got an eight today, so that's good. Um, it's gonna be a little bit slower, which I'm actually excited about because I know the fish are here, but it is gonna be slower. I like that because it's gonna let the other people lose confidence in the area. And I know exactly what's going on. Uh, it's very clear what's going on. So as the day goes, you know, I, I just gotta stay patient and keep to keep fishing and I'll catch I'll catch my fish. Um, but what's going on is there's a lot of pre-spawn fish moving up right now. And even though this doesn't look like how I fish at home, it's identical to what happens at home when females get ready to spawn. Like right now, what's what you got? Big one. He's not that big. Actually, I can almost boat flip him. I think I'm probably not going to boat flip him, but I could if I want it. I don't remember what I was saying. I was talking about how it's very, very identical to what happens at home. There's, there's something that happens when fish get ready to spawn, especially females. They, they kind of like to, they like to suspend on their docks at home. Well, obviously Okeechobee doesn't really have docks, so the closest vertical structure now is, is reed heads. It could be hydrilla, it could be things like that. But females, they love to spawn. They like to, to get up high in the water column when they pre-spawn, just before they spawn, and they'll just set up in the, in the at home. It's under docks. You'll be able to see them. Obviously, right now, like you can't, you can't see any of these fish um, because the water's so dark. But they're doing the same thing. The reason that this light tackle is working so good, everybody's flipping, the bait's going straight to the bottom, and that's great when the fish are spawning. But when they're setting up and they're moving up, they're trying to get that ambient sunlight, so they hang up way high in the water column. And so, like if the water was clear, we'd be able to see them just sitting under these reed heads. But obviously we can't, so you have to fish. You gotta fish like you see the fish. 
Like you gotta literally imagine the fish sitting there on that reed head swimming around high in the water column just under the surface. So you go in there with a little weightless worm or something like that, it's just right there at its face. When you go in there with a, uh, you know, a lot of people flipping stick baits, jigs, stuff like that, flip it in there, just go straight to the bottom. That works really good when the fish are spawning. And that's gonna happen within the next day. It could happen today and people are still catching. I caught a big one, I got a six flipping yesterday, but doing a lot of the damage with this weightless worm because it stays up high. The fish are gonna be up high as they're pre-spawning, high in the water column. And so that's, that's what I'm understanding and that's why I feel really good about my chances. If I can just get by today, it's very easy to catch, you know, six, seven pounds. I'm ahead of that today though, you know what I'm saying? But it's real easy to come out of this deal with, you know, seven, eight, nine pounds because you are waiting, you are dependent. I, I caught maybe 12 to 15 fish yesterday, but truly and honestly, I only had about seven that mattered. And what I mean by mattered, where I actually had to check it and see if it's gonna be any bigger than my other ones. I didn't, I didn't have that many good fish. Uh, so, you know, if that seven, if that seven turns to five fish that matters, your weight drops drastically. When camera boat left me yesterday, I still only had uh, maybe 18 pounds. I ended up with 23, 14 yesterday because I caught another six pounder at the end of the day. That's a heck of a coal to go from 18 to 23, almost 24. So uh, you're counting on those, those bites to get you through the day. You're, you're, you're relying heavily on that. Because the likelihood of you catching a three pounder is pretty low. Likely, it, it, it's almost like the likelihood of you catching one six plus is greater than you catching one three. The reaction here in Florida with weather is a lot faster than it is anywhere else. If, if you're on an impoundment where you got you know 100 foot of water in, in the deepest sections, 200 foot of water, how a cold front affects those fish in that lake is way delayed because because of the water column. It, it takes so long for those weather effects to get to the fish because the fish are a lot of times in the winter time, they're in 30, 40, 50 foot of water. And so when it does warm up, it takes forever before a fish in 30 foot of water knows it. It's almost like your kid, you know, if you got blinds in your room and you fall asleep, you don't really know when the sun comes up. Same way with fishing. These fish in Florida, they're, they're basically sleeping with the windows open. So they feel every effect of what happens. If you were sleeping in your house with the windows open, when it started raining, you would know it. When it got cold, you would know it instantly. When it got hot, you would know it instantly. And so the effects of what happens, that off day, calm day, warm, after it had been raining for a couple of days, the fish wanted to get out and play yesterday. And I, I totally didn't factor for that when I was thinking of what it was gonna take Luckily, I got a couple bites, but I was thinking it was going to take 22 or 23 pounds to get a check. And, you know, we're already way past that. Um, of course, they'll probably drop off a little bit, but that's the big, there's a bite. God, he's coming right at the boat. I don't know what this one is. Not a big one, but I need him. Fish like that helps right now. Fish like that really, really helps. I already fished that reed head this morning. Uh, that, that goes to show you, like I was talking about, how the fish are setting up high in the water column. You just gotta imagine. I always tell people you really need to spend time in the spring sight fishing. Sight fishing teaches you so much about how fish react to baits, how they react to casts, how they set up the pre-spawn. And it's, it, if you could see right now, if it was clear water, you would see these fish just setting up at the top of the water column, just sitting there, literally just sitting there. And so in my mind, when I make a cast, I literally try to visually think about Lake Hartwell. When I see them big old three and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pounders sitting under them dock floats, even though that's a patch of grass, that's what my mind is thinking about. And then I always look for isolated docks. So that's why you see me fishing isolated reeds. I could easily get over there and start punching some of that vegetation. I can't relate to that. <laughs> I, I didn't grow up doing that. So I just brought home, brought the Carolinas to Florida. 
Like this is what we do at home, even though it looks different. The fish, the fish are here to win. The fish are here to win. So can I, you know, can I get them all in the boat? Can I get a few breaks? My drag was open too. That was scary. <coughs> lost that one because I went to pick up on it it was sawing back into that reed here you can feel it just might have been a small one all the good ones are going to get it they're not going to miss it oh, okay wow. got it again he got it again big one big one big one Big one. That's a big one. I felt him hit it the first time. I felt him hit it the first time. I threw it over there and it was sawing. trick me today I got my motor out of the water early all that bull crap y'all put me through yesterday that was scandalous there's a lot of things he might do but he ain't gonna get me in my motor today or my power poles Probably gonna do something stupid, guys. See, I got my motor up. I'm about to get back in. I'm gonna have to chase him a little bit. say nothing. I'm not even going to say nothing. Too many people around. Too many people around. It's too much work to be done today. <laughs> one bass toll on another, and then another one toll on another, and then another toll on another. So that's a pre-spawn fish. That fish was not spawning. See how dark he is? Setting up high in the water column. Oh man. Oh man. Is that five? One, two. One, two. Let me see here. He's going to be our first angler that's going to be over the 40 pound mark and then some. Started with 2314. He's got an eight and a five in there. So, and then whatever else he's going to add to the, the mix. A couple of other things, JT, he, he said when we had him on earlier. The likelihood of catching a six plus pounder is greater than the likelihood of a three pounder. It's just a weird deal that has happened in Lake Okeechobee for so, for so long. Forget how many you caught and what you caught. Number six is going to go next time. 
There's three over there. Got a little trio. And then we got a big old double over there. My boy. He's feeling it. Yeah, I caught like a seven pounder off that one first cast this morning, off that same reed head. So there's that part. I got that going for me. I definitely got that going for me. So I'll just try to continue that pattern throughout the day. A little over two hours into day number two of three, taking the field of 150 today, chopping it down to only 50 to fish the final day tomorrow. Brian Latimer is our unofficial leader, and he's our unofficial leader by a lot, over five pounds over day one leader, David Walker. So of the guys who had great success on day one, only Latimer really has repeated it so far, Marty. Why do you think that is? Yeah, but I also think we got a lot of folks that are not reporting. I'm we looking always down do. here. Tom Reddington at 2111 yesterday. He's at zero. Real deal. Michael Neal at 21 pounds. He's at zero. But it's definitely a different day. Off day. You know, that off day and the weather piling up and the fish stacking up. Yesterday was that perfect storm. Today's more of what we thought we would see. Okeechobee will still produce some big bags and big fish, but yesterday was one of the best days I'd ever seen an individual day on the Big O. Once again, it was 15 pounds. Just surprised this hasn't panned out as good as I have not, like just this little spot right here. Really shocked. Flipping bug, I guess. What is this line situation I got going on in right here? Trying to Tony Christian, I'm in the live wheel. See me bring them up out of that reed, though. It's one thing to set the hook, but it's one thing to set the hook and bring them up and out and over. Felt good because I ain't been able to do that. <clears throat> Trust me, I'm not anti power fishing. I catch one more big one, I feel really good about it. Got it. Oh man, he pulled it out of his mouth. I was reeling it in and he pulled it. I was reeling it in, then he got it, and I guess he just had a, I think he didn't get it good. They got they got one of these. I just they got one of these too. You got it again. It's like a small one. Yeah, small one. Thank you. 
everybody. He might help, he's not that big. I didn't know I didn't get a good look at come up shaking his head. He's sort of like my middle son. He's real little, but he got big head. You can't talk about your kids on live. That's probably bad, right? Most, most dads are like, yeah, my son, he's a great kid. That one's for you, son. And then you got me on here. I don't got big head like my middle boy. <laughs> he does have a big head, though. I'm not lying. I mean, it's... He's a little guy with a big head. He's funny. Seen him catch a couple of decent fish and move himself back up. But let's jump in with your leader and doing something a little bit unorthodox on Lake Okeechobee. Has him at the top of the leaderboard. b -lat. Uh, Believe it or not, my mind is a big hollow spot right now. I... <laughs> I just want one more big one. I feel like if I get one more big one, I could, I could probably, I don't know if we'll be, we'll be close to the top of the leaderboard. I don't know if we'll be leading, but it'd be, it'd make it real interesting if I could get, have another 23 or so. I'm one bite away from that, I feel like. I got two big ones and I got uh, three little ones, three two pounders. Yesterday I just had two two pounders, three big ones and two two pounders. So the rest of the day, just focusing on, um, you know, just trying to, <laughs> you're always trying to get a big bite, but that's what I want to see happen. Three big ones would be a good, good day. The wind is really laid down right now, and that's helping me present my bait a little bit better. In fact, the wind's laying down some. It doesn't seem like it's transitioning to more bait bites just so far. But I'm, like, I'm not going to change anything. I'm not about to go pick up a crankbait and start going into canals or nothing like that. I ain't going to be silly. Just keep it nice and tight in the pocket and keep going slow. I actually caught more fish today than I have been catching than I, than I did yesterday. So uh, that's always nice to catch more. Especially on the second day, usually it goes the other way around. They didn't catch them today. I don't know how to feel, in other words, about day number two, Marty. How about you? Sort of typical Okeechobee day for my years down here. I don't have the experience this guy over here does, but I've been here enough to know you can blast them on one day on this lake and then turn around the next day and have seven to 11 pounds. It's all about getting a couple of those big bites. It really is. That's going to be critical tomorrow for whoever wins. I think whoever wins tomorrow is going to have to have three of those right bites, five pounds or plus. And those fish can show up in an area overnight this time of the year. An angler is going to go down one stretch tomorrow at some point in time, an area he's not been down, and all of a sudden go, wow, what just happened right here? Normally on this lake, it's a 50-yard stretch that settles the whole tournament. Michael Neal. Uh-oh, big bass alert right here, guys. If you watch this guy on uh, live, he's a little bit energetic, just a little bit. Brian Latimer, 23-14 yesterday. Can he take the lead? Today, 19-14, a total of 43-12. That puts you in second place in contingency for tomorrow, Brian. Yeah, that's all you can ask for, I guess, you know, to be in contention for the lead. Um, you know, I was short. Yesterday I had three big ones and two little ones, and today I got two big ones and, and three little ones. So, you know, just one bite just takes your, it takes your bag from teens to mid-20s really fast. But I, I was really thankful for what I got. There's a lot of pressure where I'm fishing, so I'm having to, like, learn how to fish it every day. Well, I heard you use the word patience. Yeah, you got to be patient. Yeah. Super patient. Uh, Are you a kind of patient kind of guy? Because I'm not. I actually really am. Okay, I, I actually I can, I can be patient. When I got confidence in the area, it's easy to be patient when you're confident. There you go. There when you, you, go. you know, when you don't feel like there's fish there or you feel like there's always somewhere better, 
We tend to speed up, but uh, I got a lot of confidence in the area I'm in, for sure. Good deal. Well, good luck tomorrow. Thank we'll you. see you tomorrow, sir. Appreciate sure. you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Good luck. Matt Reed, come on up here from Madison, Texas. 19, 14, so got close to that 20-pound mark today, or as we call it, dub. But uh, I think I'm, I left in second, so uh, that's good for now. You know, of course, I'm sure we'll bump down a little bit as way in kind of goes on. But it was, uh, it was a good day. If I can kind of keep that up, you think like it, like one big bite could carry me over over the top to the V-dub, to the dub, to the V-dub, victory dub. You know what? That don't work. Thank you, man. Sure. That don't work, does it? V-dub. Victory. Ah, right.